You don't mind standing to your feet for the reading of the morning scripture. After a week like we had, I just want to remind us in scripture based on Psalms 105, verse 1 through 5. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Every night again, things get so rough and it yeah. gets so bad. Yeah. And we can't do that, but just call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. He says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call on the name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of the Lord seek the Lord in his strength. See his face well before. Yes. Remember his marvelous works yes. that he had done, his wonders, and the judgment of his mouth. Yes. And so, right there, just because he is who he is, you ought to just give his name glory. Yes. We can focus on the rough stuff, but we can also focus on how good he is. Yes. And just because he is God, nothing else. We call upon your name. Because it's your name that's above every name. And we thank you right now for that name, that name of Jesus. And your name being in this place today. Whenever we start to think about the wrong stuff or the bad stuff, we just want to focus on your name. For your name is in this place. So Holy Spirit, with your name in this place, have your way today. Move on the hearts and the minds of your people, God. Remind us and, re and your name is what's going to get us through. So have your way today, God. We thank you in advance, God, for a worship experience that you will be pleased with. Thank you, God, for saving souls today. Thank you, Lord, for meeting needs today. Thank you, Lord, for changing lives. And we'll be ever so grateful to give that name. That name that's above every name. Honor and praise in Jesus' name. We praise your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year, whatever you want to ask. Let's celebrate your day.
Yeah. 
hands up for praise, see what didn't see it. The devil really had it. The devil really had it. But guess what? Jesus came and
first Sundays at 9.30 a.m. Tuesdays at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Sunday Fellowship, Sunday School at 9.30 a.m. Worship Service at 11 a.m. Macedonia ladies, please join First Lady Justine McKenzie for a Women's Day meeting to share updates immediately after the worship service in the end. Mass Choir, for those interested in singing in the Mass Choir for Church Anniversary or Women's Mass Choir for Women's Day, they All right. they don't All right. yes. yeah. this series will teach you how to be single, saved, and satisfied in right. God's way. Right. Yeah. Invite everyone in Everyone, and join us at 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday for the Dynamic Series. Yes. Yeah. Love and Action Pastoral Anniversary. Yeah. Today at 3.30 p.m., yeah. Pastor McKenzie and the Macedonian Church will travel to Love and Action in Battle Creek to yeah. preach and minister for Reverend John Boyd's second pastoral anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. We will be departing shortly after the worship service. The church will preach the word, minister, and celebrate with Bethel and on their 100th church anniversary. Yeah. 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 Day, on September 16th, during the 11 a.m. worship service, we'll be having our annual Women's Day celebration. Yeah. We'll be honoring God for the work that he does through godly women in ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Minister Robin Cage from Suwanee, Su Su Georgia, will be coming all our single those of you who are trying to date, those of you who think you want to date, those of you who know somebody trying to date, you want to be here on Wednesdays as we go through this series called Righteously Single. Because a whole bunch of us didn't know what we're learning just going through this series. Based on that response, I ain't sure how many of y'all going <laughs> Years ago, I said we going somewhere. And I say we going somewhere. So let me let me help you. Don't get too comfortable with the blessings of God. Because when you was wishing somebody would invite you, but nobody trying to invite you. Now we get invited. Let's, let's, let's go now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So we want to see everybody who can and will to meet us, uh, go with us to Battle Creek, uh, Love in Action, 637 West Van Buren Street in Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh, they will start serving food at 1 p.m. Praise God. Hallelujah. You ain't even got to go home and cook. You can just get on the bus or get in the car and go to Battle Creek and get you a structious meal. Amen. So we certainly, we certainly need to support today. I just, I've learned this, Dr. Curtis. I've learned something about my own self. I just do better when I'm around Macedonia people. Oh, yeah. I do okay when I'm like by myself, just you know, me and my family and some others, but we just do better with yeah. Macedonia people. So we'll see you at uh, 637 West Van Street, Battle Creek uh, for the 3.30 service, but we'll also be there to get us a little might be also. Um, and of course, on the second Sunday in September, we will be uh, preaching at Redeemed Christian Center. So please mark your calendars. Amen. 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 You don't see that every day. There's a balloon just coming out of the sky. Amen. So we'll be there celebrating uh, the pastoral anniversary of Pastor Jerry Hinden at the Redeemed Christian Center. And uh, 
those of you who were here a few weeks ago when he came, he blessed our house. Amen. So, amen. So we certainly intend to return the favor in Light County. Once again, y'all got quiet on me. I feel like I'm playing a basketball game and my ball is flat. So every time I try to bounce the ball and ain't got no air in it, it bounces and stay right down there. So hopefully, y'all ain't going to let my ball stay flat too long. Um, September the 13th at 7 p.m., Mark it on your calendars, please. We're going to go over and be with the Bethel Baptist Church for their 100th Amen. church anniversary celebration. It's not a small thing for a church to be in existence for 100 years. So, and this is right here in our city. And so we want to go over and be a blessing to Bethel. And then that following Sunday, September the 16th, is Women's Day. Yeah. I it's Women's Day. And so we want to make sure that we are uh, ready to go. Uh, Sister Jackie Crittenden and the ushers, when do y'all meet next? Any other ushers, when y'all meet? Thursday? I'll be at y'all meet. As we get ready for Women's Day. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> It was just a minute ago, you did not want to even talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> you talking about hey. <laughs> Master Tony, listen up. Um, most of you may not know and have, and many of you may not have the appreciation that some of us do for the type of week that our ministry experienced this week. Amen. Let me bring you up to speed on what happened this week. Because I want everybody to feel this thing the way I feel. Amen. On this past Tuesday, one day, Tuesday, we already had one of our members in the hospital in Jackson, Brother Sister Lowe, and he's there now. Hey, Cedric, how you doing? Yeah. Brother Cedric was there. Then I got a text that Sister Gladys McGee was having knee surgery in Jackson on Tuesday. So that's two, right? Later on that day, I get a text that um, Sister Brian Bennett has been taken to the emergency room in Jackson. That's three. In the midst of that, I heard about Sister Katie Cage was taken to the hospital. That's four. Then later on, I get a text saying, Brother Will Atkins is in the emergency room. That's five. I heard that one of our members, the mother-in-law, was also taken to the hospital. That's six. And it has seen, it just seemed to me that wouldn't it be strange that we, the Macedonian church, all got to go to the hospital on the same day? And Tuesday was such a crazy day that one of our members who went to the emergency room got admitted into the hospital and on that Tuesday night, I believe, and Wednesday morning as of like 9.30, they still didn't have a bed for it because the hospital was full. <laughs> so we did some heavy prayer, heavy lifting praying on Wednesday. But all y'all won't come to prayer service. Some of y'all just heard this for the first time this week. It's like, it's shocked. Like, we've been dealing with it all week. So, here's what God has placed on my heart for us. Today. Because we cannot just sit back and be victimized by the enemy. So today is August the 26th. I'm giving you a couple of days to prepare because on September 1, we're going into a church wide fast. Now, if by chance you can't and won't 
That's cool. But the rest of us, we are going into a 30-day church-wide fast for the entire month of September. We're going to get our church and our church members healthy and healed in the name of Jesus. Here's what I told one of our members who was actually in the hospital. And they, the hospital was full. I said, well, what we're going to do, if nothing else, we're going to pray and try to get all those Macedonian members healed so they can give up that bed so somebody else can get in there. And so your uh, foundational scripture for this Daniel's fast again, same one we did earlier this year. Starting in September, September 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. That's your foundational scripture. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And it doesn't matter what we see or what we experience. We're going to walk by faith, not by sight. We're going to actually proclaim the name of Jesus to all of those who are sick, all of those who are who need healing, and that's both mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. We also have bereavement that is going on in uh, our families in our church, and we're also fasting for them. We see Brother McFall here. We know that. Uh, that situation is what it is, but we believe God is able to keep you in perfect peace, to give you comfort, to encourage your heart like in the midst of your situation. <coughs> and so starting September 1, September 1, we the Macedonia family, and what that may mean, I ain't even like going to do a poll, like who going to do what? If don't nobody else do it, I'll be fasting for it. <laughs> And so, if you want to join me, your foundational scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And you also want to get a copy of the faith confessions or the, the prayer confessions that we did on this past Wednesday. It has a ton of healing scriptures. That's the reason y'all ought to come and press a few miles And so... If you need a copy of that, you need to see someone who was there or come see me or something so that we can get you some ammunition. Because what we do know is that prayer works. Yeah. And praying and fasting works extra. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Everybody cool? Yeah. 30 days. 30 days. We're going to get it in. I see a hand. Yes. Five, seven. For we walk by faith and not by sight. I just uh, uh, mentioned it this coming Friday, August 31st, this coming Friday, the homeboy celebration for Sister Ernestine McCall will be held right here at the Macedonia Baptist Church. That service will start at 11 a.m. with family hour. And the service will start at 12 noon. Amen. Pastor McFall, what's his first name? Pastor Lawrence McFall will be uh, bringing the eulogy. Pastor Charles McGee will be officiating. I'll be in the house. Amen. Amen. I'll be right here. I'll be in the house. And so uh, those that can and will, please come out and, and uh, offer support and comfort to the McFall and the Ogan and the other Crumb family. So please, if you can and will, come out and support. Um, it is a tough thing. This little area right here, this is a great equalizer right here. And it's their time now. Might be our time down the road. <laughs> so we want to make sure we support as best we can. Amen? Amen. <sighs> y'all look a little better. Yeah. <laughs> like y'all got some hope. Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank God for you. Know that we love you dearly. Let's get ready to give you. Okay. I got like two, three people who are consistently happy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else trying to figure out whether you're happy or not. Like, 
you, you ain't got no happy smile, you ain't got no happy hands. <laughs> Amen. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. First and foremost, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your diligence and your commitment and your contributions on a regular basis to the support of this ministry. Thank you for allowing us to be able to do ministry at an elite level because I don't care how you slice of the dice, you can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You can do it. You can jump over benches, but you still need some money. Because right? you can shout hallelujah all day long and them lights still got to be paid for. As soon as do not care how loud you shout, hallelujah. And so we thank God for your support in allowing us to be here so that people can come in and hear the word of God so that their lives can be changed and their needs can be met. And it's because of your generosity that God also is blessing this ministry at a elite level. And so we say thank you. If you don't mind holding your envelopes in the air, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another expression of your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for every envelope. Thank you for every heart. Thank you for every hand. We thank you, God, that as we release our gifts to you, God, you release your blessing back to your people. Lord, we thank you right now that as you have seen the faithfulness of your people, God, that your faithfulness kick in and that you will supply every single one of their needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We love you with our gifts and our giving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll start to give it off followed by our deacons, our trustees, and you, my sisters, and my brothers. At this time, will you please stand face the wall and let's just go directly from the rear.
there to help distribute those, but we need people to know that that event is coming. It has been in the paper, but you know, Albia, we go by word of mouth. So please uh, pass that on to any school age child that do not have to attend Harrington Elementary to receive these free supplies, and they have plenty. And you have a question? Uh, it, I believe it's six o'clock. Uh, it's either six or six thirty, but um, I think it's six o'clock, like six to eight. So come, thank you for asking that. That's a good question. But Harrington on the 29th, that's next Wednesday evening. Come out and get your school supplies, backpacks, and then go shopping. <laughs> okay.
in Galatians 5, 19 through 21 from the message Bible and see if this is how someone would describe you. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21, message Bible. It is obvious what kind of life you develop out of trying to get your own way all the time. <laughs> Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex. <laughs> A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Yeah. Frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness. Tinket or tricking gods. Magic show religion. Paranoid loneliness. Cutthroat competition. All consuming yet never satisfied wants. A brutal temper. An impetus to love or be loved. Divided homes and divided lives. Small-minded and lopsided pursuits, a vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. Is that how someone would describe the fruit that's in your spirit? Or would they describe it based on Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, again from the Message Bible? But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberant about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way of life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Which one of those set of scriptures would actually describe the fruit that's in your spirit? And to add on to it, add to the conversation, what grade do you believe you would get based on what is described by about you? We will be graded and it will come from what's in our spirit. I know we'll be graded because Romans chapter 14 verse 12 says, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Matthew 12 and verse 6 tells us, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account of thereof in the day of judgment. You will be graded. I don't know about you, though. If I don't get graded, I want the highest grade possible. <laughs> Because our young people are about to go back to school. We got college students that are possibly starting classes as early as tomorrow. I want you to know that if you're going to focus on your grades this semester or this, this uh, trimester or whatever it is that is your turn, you also need to focus on your grade of what is actually in your spirit. I just remember when I was a student in, in junior high and high school, I actually uh, regularly landed on the high honor roll or honor roll. Amen. When I was a high school student, for four years straight, I was on high honor roll. Right. When I got to college, I did find myself on the dean's list. <laughs> but nothing like none of that compares to the grade that I really ultimately want to get now because it ain't about high honor roll for me anymore. It ain't about these lists anymore. It's about finding my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and making sure that God is pleased. And if you're going to join me, you ought to want to get at least the same grade to about talking to anybody. As we take inventory of what's in our spirit, we want to take a look at the fruits of the spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. And it gives us nine fruit. And we've actually already talked about six of them. The first, they're, they're divided in sections in groups of threes. The first group was uh, love, joy, and peace. And that dealt with our relationship to God. The second group was long suffering, gentleness, and goodness. And that dealt with our relationship and our reaction to other people. But today we want to take a look at the third group. And that is faith, meekness, and temperance. This group focuses on the requirements that uh, you and I have for conducting yourself as a Christian. So by some presentation today, I want to lift up three fruit of the spirit to figure out what should actually be in my spirit. 
Watch this. We've already hit point number one. Point number one was a genuine relationship with God. That should be a fruit in our spirit. Point number two was a, a God reaction to other people. But today, we want to talk about the grade required as a Christian. The grade required as a Christian. And those grades are dependent on something. And the first thing we want to look at to see what our grades should be is right there in verse number 22. We've already talked about love, joy, and peace. We talked about long suffering, gentleness, and goodness. We want to deal with this word called faith. Amen. What grade should be your requirement for your faith in God? This word faith <coughs> or faithfulness speaks to both your trust in God and your dependency on God, but it also speaks to your confidence in fellow Christians and your reliability as a Christian. Watch this. I'm throwing a lot at you because I got to get out of here. I got 15 minutes to preach this whole thing. Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, For by grace are we saved through faith, through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Hebrew 11 and 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And this, this scripture is going to be very familiar to you over the course of the month of September. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Watch this. If you're going to get the right grade for the fruit that's in your spirit, um, you need to have faith. Yeah. Watch this. Faith is the foundational fruit for every believer, even before love. Your love, even for God, flows out of your faith in God. How do I know this? Because the Bible tells us in Romans 5, 8, it says that while we were yet sinners, we did not love God. God loved us. But somewhere along the line, we had to build up enough confidence that if I change my situation and change my relationship, that I'm actually going to be, I'm going to be all right with Christ. So I'll actually use my faith to actually get saved and then out of my salvation I'll love him back if you're going to get the right grade as a believer your faith has to be on point today like no other day this sermon is so appropriate because of what I know many of us are going through right now and if you claim that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, and the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please Him, then we need to let our faith show up and stop letting our worry show up. Some of us are going through some things. Some of us have been harmed by other people. Some of us have some situations in our health. Some of us have some, some legal situations going on. Some of us got some situations that we actually need to make sure it is our faith that shows up as opposed to our flesh. Watch this. When things break out for a believer, a believer has to let his or her faith show up. How is it that most of us got so much faith sitting in the sanctuary? And as soon as life hit us, we hit that door, we forget everything that the preacher done said. We forget everything that the Bible done said. We forget everything we said. We was the same ones up in here talking about how good God is. We was the same ones talking about he'll make a way out of nowhere. We was the same one that said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Shall prosper. But we're also the same one that be sitting there talking about, I don't know what I'm going to do. They done mess around and cut my lights off. They done mess around and put, put a, a, a eviction notice in my mailbox. They done mess around and gave me a peak slip. The doctor done gave me some bad news. Listen, if your faith is your faith, your faith is your faith, no matter what happens. I want you to 
you to know that no man or woman should be able to knock you off your square and take your faith up out of your situation. I want you to know that if you are really faith-based, you are faith-based when the sun is shining, you are faith-based when the rain comes, you are faith-based no matter what happens, your faith is still your faith. I know I'm talking to somebody. This thing called faith, it should be found in every single believer's spirit. And no matter what news you get, that should be what comes out first. I hear you already talking. Well, Reverend, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what you're going through. But I'm looking at Brother McFall back there. Yeah. Yes. Whose wife transitioned this life. And on Sunday morning, he's in service. I'm looking at Sister Joe back there. Yeah. Whose sister was put on life support this week. Yeah. But who's not breathing on his own. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know the Bible tells me that if you just exercise a little bit of faith, you ain't got to deal with the whole measure of faith. It says faith the size of a mustard seed will cause a mountain to move and be cast into the sea. But your faith will get you through if you exercise your faith. Am I talking to anybody? While I'm on the faith piece, let me just throw this in. Let's throw this little ditty in. This word faith in the New King James Version, it actually says faithfulness. Part of the reason that some of us can't express our faith because we have no faithfulness in no, no part of our bodies. Watch this. If I can't depend on your word, what can I depend on? If you say something, you have to do something because you would not dare let God tell you a promise and then him not deliver it to you. So how in the world are you going to be the one that will tell somebody one thing and do something else? Your faithfulness also speaks to what kind of faith you have. Because if you will lie to you, you will show a lie to somebody else. Point number two. Meekness. What grade should you get for your meekness? Or you need to give yourself a grade for your faithfulness. Too. Meekness. Watch this. Meekness speaks to intentionally and purposely humbling and submitting yourself for the cause of Christ. I'm going to say that one more time because I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the weight down on this one. Meekness speaks to intentionally and purposely humbling and submitting yourself for and to the cause of Christ. You are humbling and submitting yourself on purpose. It is not that you can't do something about what's going on around you. You willingly choose to submit rather than going back and being who you used to be. Can I just make a provocative statement right here, Brother Keith? Anybody can act a fool. Anybody can act a fool. But when you are meek, you take the opportunity <coughs> to not act a fool. But you take the opportunity to humble yourself intentionally to show something different to a crazy world that you serve a living and sensible God. Watch this. I need to say this and make sure that I'm clear on this. 
sometimes we choose not to really humble ourselves because we don't want other people to take us for being weak. So keep in mind what I said. I said meekness, not weakness. So to my brothers and my sisters, you and I, when something happens, I don't care how bad it is, you get the worst news ever, you actually have the opportunity to purposely and intentionally humble yourself and submit yourself to the authority of Christ and act like you belong to him. That does not mean you're weak. That's my encouragement to you. Just for balance of conversation. To those people who think Christians are weak and think you can take advantage of Christians that you think are weak. Let me hurry up and tell you something. There's a difference between meekness and weakness. Weakness is lack of power. Meekness is power under control. So please don't get it twisted that just because we don't keep our mouth closed that you can run over us any old time you want to. Please don't get it twisted that just because we ain't acting a fool and cutting up don't mean that we can't do something about this situation. Because if you had met us about a couple of years ago and you did the crazy stuff you're doing right now, you said what you're saying right now, what they your name was already been in your bitch of woman. Simply what you want to do. 
Listen. Temptations of all kinds come your way. Let me just share some that you have to overcome. When people find your last nerve.
women's mom is in heaven, if you know that she's a part of the great cloud of witnesses, and if she's watching you, and if you happen to find yourself trying to talk to her even from heaven, would you still tell her, mama, you know what, I stole something today. Mama, I smoked some weed today. And I ain't got no prescription for it. Mama, I got drunk today. Mama, I ain't do my homework today. And I didn't care. Mama, I cussed the teacher out. It takes self-discipline to actually do what you know is right every single time. It takes self-discipline to be great. It takes self-discipline to achieve what others will not do because they want mediocrity. And so this whole thing called peer pressure ain't no such thing unless it's somebody <coughs> that's actually going in the same direction as you. Is this making sense? Yeah. Self discipline. Let's close it out. Let's close it out. Listen, I'm done because we don't do the rest of the preaching that love and action. Jesus himself was the ultimate one to show us faith, to show us meekness. And to show us temperance or self-control. Jesus himself had enough faith that if he laid his body down on Friday, that he himself would pick his own body back up on Sunday morning. Jesus himself had enough meekness in him that when they beat him all night long, he never said a mumbling word. Jesus himself when he had self-discipline because he knew that he came to be a sacrificial lamb for you and for me. He had enough self-discipline that when they took him up on Calvary's cross, he could have got down anytime he got ready. But he had enough self-discipline that I'm going to take these nails in my hands for all the things that your hands did. I'm going to take these nails in my feet for all the places that your feet took you that you should not have taken you. I'm going to allow this crown of thorns to be in my head for all the bad thoughts that you ever thought. I'm going to allow them to whip me all night long and to bleed out so that you don't have a mark on your body. I want you to know he has self-discipline because the Bible says he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. But at the appropriate time he hung his head and he died. That he was asking for a grade. He had already got an A right there. But I know that wasn't enough because A plus was in his future. Because he died on a Friday. But that is Sunday morning with all power in his hand. He got his A plus because he got up. I want you to know that he got up. He got up for your hang ups. He got up for the things that you couldn't do. He got up for the things you wouldn't do. And every time you got an up, he put his A on top of your ass. And he gave you a grade that you didn't deserve. He gave you a grade that you didn't earn. He gave you a grade by his grace. And I want you to know that if you're in this place today, all you got to do is call on that name Jesus. Call on that name Jesus. That thing Jesus will give you what you don't have today. I know I missed up last week with Jesus is still in the morning. I know I need to get it all together last week with Jesus is still in the morning. He's actually putting his A on top of my F. And my F now is turned to the A because I look like Jesus now. I walk like Jesus now. I talk like Jesus now. But you and my spirit will get an A plus because Jesus is on my side. He's on your side. You ought to clap your head. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet if you can. The great required for the fruit in your spirit. We should allow the Holy Spirit to press from the inside out. Love. Even when 
nobody. That includes ourselves. So touch it, God. We ought to allow the Holy Spirit to press from the inside out. Joy. Every believer should never spend a lifetime being unhappy. Because the joy of the Lord ought to be your strength. We ought to allow the Holy Spirit to press from the inside out. Peace. Listen. Trouble all around. But the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the Prince of Peace. And so, in the midst of your soul, you can have a calm in your spirit that can only come from God. Long suffering. You gotta be able to put up with some stuff and not lose your courage. Gentleness. Be kind as your primary demeanor. Goodness. Be good because you do good things. Rock that thing with your faith. If you really believe in God, even though you can't see it, let God work it out. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I don't see it right now. But I believe it with all my heart. So I'm going to stand on this word until I get a God result. Then be meek. It doesn't mean you're weak. It means you can control yourself and the power that's in you. And then temperance. Self-control, self-discipline. I do the right thing. Because it's the right thing to do every single time. And you can't actually get me to do nothing else. Matter of fact, the old saints, older saints would have said it this way in the song. You can't make me doubt it. Because I know too much about it. And if I know too much about it, I have to act like I know too much about it. <laughs> so whatever grade that you had when you came in. Calling, reaffirming your relationship with Jesus Christ, it brings the power of the blood of Christ into your life and your situation. And he always comes with an A+. Plus. So now, those of you who are already saved have got your grade for an average of but there may be someone in here today that even after hearing the word, you know if it was a college, you haven't even enrolled yet. So your grade point average is still 0.0. But you can do something about that today. You can enroll today. The way you enroll to get the right grade you have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says you shall be saved. Do you hear the That is what is needed for you today. Would you come? Would you come and confess the Lord Jesus? And if you genuinely believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, Salvation is sure to you. Are you here today? If you're here today, you're already saved, but you don't have a church home. You don't have a place that you can come and be fed the gospel on a regular and consistent basis. Where you can grow up and you can start fertilizing and working the seeds of the truth that will be in you when the power of the by the Holy Spirit. The best you, would you come? My last call is this. You already saved, you have a church home. But you just need to reconnect with God. You need to have a, another touch of the master's hand. The best you.
Can you need to renew your relationship? Did you come? Did you come? Did you come? Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy.
For I love to you and I love for I love one. Lord, we thank you right now for the life and legacy of Sister Ernestine McFall. We thank you for this husband who has been there for all these years. We thank you for this brother who has been there all these years. We thank you for these cousins and these sister-in-laws and all this extended family. Lord, we also lift up the Wilkins family too. God, we don't have to get into all the details, but we know that if you don't lose, we don't know if we can make it. And so we have a wife here, and we have some children here that need your help right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that husband, God, and Lord, we just pray that you will keep him in comfort and in care and give his attention so that he will return and be the man of God that you have called for him to be. Lord, comfort this family. Encourage them, God. Wipe every tear from their eyes. Let them know that the sun will shine again tomorrow. It's okay to cry today. But God, you know that you know, you know how to handle this situation. And so we turn it all over to you, God. And not even just this situation at the altar. Those that are in the congregation right now. We have those who are in the hospital right now. We have those who are going to get ready for cancer treatments right now. We have those who are getting ready for all kinds of situations that's going on in the body. We have those who don't even know what's going on in the body. They just know that they don't feel well. But we know that you are a healer, God. We know that you are a deliverer, God. And we are trusting and depending on you. And so God, our faith looks up to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you right now that we can turn to you. This is not about who's on our left or on our right. This is who is in our view on the up top. And up top, we know that it's you, God. So we thank you. We love you today. We ask for forgiveness of our sin. But we thank you in advance for healing our hearts. We thank you for in advance for healing our situation. We thank you in advance for encouraging our hearts. For allowing us to be able to have the courage just to get through this week. We thank you right now. When we don't know, you already have the answer. We thank you right now. That hearts may be heavy. We thank you right now that joy is going to come in the morning. But we know it's nighttime right now. But you promised us. We can make it through for a night. But joy, say but joy. But joy comes in the morning. And we're looking for the morning light. We know it's going to be all right. We love you today. We thank you today. We appreciate everything you're doing. We turn it all over to you. And we're going to rest in your kingdom.